so let's continue our discussion with the next part that is history let's see the questions uh, where was the first buddhist council convened so uh, we all know that that was that was convened after the uh, after almost 100 years after the mahaparinirvana of lord buddha around 486 bc that is on uh, rajgir also known as girivraj later patliputra long story uh, under the patronage uh, patronage of ajar shatru uh, let's see the next question which gupta ruler assumed the throne after killing his elder brother so it was uh, chandragupta uh, the second also known as chandragupta chandragupta vikramaditya uh, who killed his uh, uh, elder brother known as uh, ramgupta who was not that able to rule his this kingdom next question here is who laid the foundation of vardhan dynasty now vardhan dynasty we all remember the name of uh, harshvardhan that was the most famous ruler of this vardhan dynasty and what area does it uh, uh, it was flourished uh, around uh, today's haryana that is uh, his its capital was at haneshwar so uh, who laid the foundation of vardhan dynasty that was pushyabhuti pushyabhuti the next question here is who established trade relations with the roman empire now here in this question there are uh, multiple answers of this see we all know that kushan and chera both had uh, trade relations with roman empire kushana as we, as we know that the location is uh, northwestern of today is northwestern part of india around the kashmir uh, valley and uh so they maintained trade relations uh, with roman empire via the land route and uh, while talking about chera uh, who ruled over the kingdom of uh, uh, today's kerala and uh, travancore and uh, mostly tamil nadu so they maintained the trade relations with roman empire via the sea route okay. so therefore the uh, answer over here is more than one of the above kushan and chera so the answer over is over here is e the next question over here, here is the muslim ruler whose empire was regarded as a part of darul islam was now here there's a minor mistake answer over here is il tutmish slight error ho jata hai sorry so it's c il tutmish il tutmish with its uh, uh, extremist policy towards uh, Exp expanding and uh, extending his empire owing to uh, coming from uh, islamist origin so therefore we all know that darul islam uh, itself means a board of islam and uh, a, a territory a land where the laws of islam islamic laws were followed and uh, ruler also they patronize the religion so therefore it was iltutmish so moving on to the next question who among the following opposed the power of khalifa now caliphate uh, was an important feature of uh, the iranian and uh, uh, mogul rulers uh, sorry uh, even the mogul uh, but before moguls there are they were delhi sultanate rulers sultanate rulers so they also they wanted a recognition from they wanted to have a recognition with uh, from the caliphate so it was muhammad alauddin khilji alauddin khilji who who basically when he uh, come, he came to the throne he uh, basically declared himself as a more uh, despotic sultan and uh, he claimed that he never wanted a recognition from the caliphate so therefore he opposed the power of khalifa so uh, the answer over here is b alauddin khilji who opposed the power of khalifa was alauddin khilji next moving on to the next question is tughril khan tughril khan raised the stand, standard of revolt during whose reign so it was balban balban as we all know that uh, balban was a more uh, more of a authoritarian authoritarian ruler and uh, uh, had uh, some extremist policies or for uh, proper administration for his own uh, uh, forces he wanted to have a uh, well organized and administered uh, forces with him so uh, 
you must have known uh, you, you must have heard about uh, bulban's blood and iron policy uh, for his administration so that itself signifies his extremist or uh, uh, authoritarian behavior so it was bulban so who was the first mughal ruler who fought against the british now it was aurangzeb aurangzeb uh, uh, in the history in uh, in its period uh, on, till his uh, period uh, means uh, aurangzeb uh, right from the start of mughal rulers uh, we have seen that mughals mughal rulers were uh, more welcoming towards the east india company uh, and uh, their trade relations or uh, they were welcoming their convoys in their uh, ports so till till aurangzeb it was uh, a welcome territory for uh, uh, the britishers but aurangzeb had uh, some sort of conflict with the uh, we uh, an uh, an english uh, ruler or uh, the officer so it was aurangzeb the next question over here is which of the following were the social reforms introduced by william bentinck the most famous one william bentinck so we all know that 1829 sati abolition of sati and uh, suppression of organized bands of thugs these were the these were the most uh, renowned works under his uh, tenure William Bentinck, eighteen twenty-eight to eighteen thirty-five, if I am correct. Yes, abolition of sati and suppression of organized bands of thugs. So uh, we can see that one and four are here correct. And abolition of slavery, we all know that it was uh, under the tenure of Lord Ellenborough, in forty-three, I think. Yes. So one and four, there was no such options. So therefore, the answer is none of the above. E. So let's move on to the next question. Sindh was conquered and annexed by. So it was uh, yes. It was Charles Napier who conquered Sindh and annexed it. Uh, the famous Battle of Miani, eighteen forty-three. Yes. So moving on to the next question. In which year first census was introduced in India? We all know that census is very much important nowadays. Uh, Uh, right from uh, framing the policies and uh, uh, just to determine what the uh, present condition of the past policies uh, were to know the uh, to know the actual reality we conduct such surveys that is known as census so first synchronous census i have written over here the first synchronous census was undertaken by under the british rule in 1881 uh, first synchronous and uh, first uh, first census was introduced over in 1872 under lord mayo we all know that this was non synchronous the the or more organized form the more organized way of uh, conducting census was under lord uh, ripon from that ruled uh, that was the viceroy so here the answer is 1872 so i have given some additional information about the census over here you can read uh, read it after so so it's a, oh again a question from the modern india on which date sukhdev bhagat singh and rajguru were hanged we all know this date we all cheer this date and most close to the heart or uh, these three revolutionaries so it was 23rd of march 1930 1931 the ans so they were they were tried under lahore conspiracy case we all know that they uh, wanted to uh, take a revenge of uh, for the death of lala rajpat rai with doctor uh, with uh, the superintendent of police uh, james scott but somehow uh, he managed to escape but uh, they mistakenly shot john sonders so it was the lahore conspiracy case also we uh, 
observed observed 23rd, 23rd of march is as uh, shahid divas so moving on to the next question who was the third satyagrahi of individual satyagraha launched by mahatma gandhi in 1940 so epsc has played a trick over here we everyone knows that who was the first uh, sat individual satyagrahi we all know that we know how he was the first satyagrahi individual satyagrahi the second also we uh, are well aware that was jawaharlal nehru that uh, who who mahatma gandhi has asked him to join the movement but bpsc here has uh, asked a third satyagrahi so that came as a surprise so that was brahmadatt another uh, he was he was part of the ashram uh, that time uh, mr brahmadatt okay the next question who launched secret radio during the writing uh, during the quit india movement 1942 uh, it was usha mehta and we all know that it's uh, so many underground uh, activities were uh, uh, going on at that time in 1942 to help the uh, national leaders who were uh, uh, somehow escaped or uh, somehow they were moving away they were they were hiding from the british forces at that time okay so secret radio secret radio during the quit india movement usha mehta next question who was the physician of magadh ruler again ancient india who was the physician of magadh ruler bimbisa it's a famous story uh, the answer over here is jivak and uh, bimbisa sent jivak to cure uh, uh, malwa ruler uh, for jaundice i think yes so that that became a story what is the so what is the next question here who was the real founder of turk rule in bihar it was uh, ibn bakhtiyar khilji uh, we all know that he was the commander of uh, kutubuddin ebak of slave who established the slave dynasty in india ibn bakhtiyar khilji we all know that he uh, destroyed the nalanda uh, university and uh, established this Turk rule in uh, in the parts of Bengal and uh, the then Bengal and Odisha that was a combined territory of uh, that time. So it was Ibn Bakhtiyar Khilji. Next question: Who was the first Indian governor of Bihar? It was Satyendra Prasanna Sinha. True fact. Who? Okay. Next question: Who were the leaders of Santhal Revolt? very famous santhal revolt of uh, uh, bihar and jharkhand the combined territory so it was sindhu kanu along with uh, along with the sisters chanda and uh, okay the, uh, their sisters were also involved in this revolt santhal revolt so sindhu and kanu ladies and gentlemen in which year chauri revolt of bihar took place again a crude fact uh, nothing to discuss in detail about this it's uh, 1798 next question in which year was orissa separated from bihar again 1912 see interesting question now though uh, it is an interesting question it's very common common question now now it is who is known as frontier gandhi a lucent fact i would say it was khan abdul ghafar khan from northwest frontier province okay next question is where was jhansi ki rani lakshmi bai died so though, though she belonged to the jhansi of uttar pradesh she fought at uh, near the border and uh, uh, became a martyr at gwalior we also have a tomb at uh, of her run lakshmi bai at so the next question is who has said about bengal partition the partition announcement fell like a bombshell so it was surendranath benerji in uh, one of his uh, uh, biography he has mentioned this 
statement about Bengal partition that partition announcement fell like a bombshell. It was very close to their heart, no? The Bengalis were so much uh, and emotional about their land, territory. The partition felt like a really like a bombshell. Surinath Banerjee. Okay. Next question. Sardar Udham Singh killed whom? Now, uh, there's a catch over here. There's a catch over here. Uh, there is also an option of General Dyer and Michael or Dyer. So, people get confused over here. General Dyer was the one who was the commander who, uh, in 1919, who ordered the Indian troops, the British Indian troops, to fire at the unarmed people uh, who were uh, assembled at Jallianwala Bagh, Amritsar. And, uh, but Michael Adair was the uh, governor of Punjab at that time. He acknowledged the uh, uh, giving orders of General Dyer to the British troops of uh, open fire of uh, uh, to the unarmed people, General Jallianwala Bagh. So he acknowledged the uh, wrongdoings of General Dyer. So that's why uh, that's why Sadar Udham Singh was uh, outrageous and uh, he. Uh, took a revenge, uh, killing Michael O'Dyer in 1940 in London. Okay, next question. How? Who successfully led the Bardoli Satyagraha? Bardoli Satyagraha, we all know, very common question. Uh, it's Vallabhai uh, Patel. After this, uh, uh, after this uh, Satyagraha, Bardoli Satyagraha, the uh, women of uh, Bardoli uh, demanded uh, to demanded Ga Mr. Gandhi, Mr. Mahatma Gandhi, to give him a give him a title of sardar so after this pardoli satyagraha vallabhai patel was given the title of sardar next question now who among the following was not a member of cabinet mission sent to india in 1946 ad uh, we uh, were well aware that there were three members stafford cripps uh, lord pathik lawrence and uh, one more uh, Ramsey MacDonald was uh, related to the 1932 communal award uh, that uh, created a rift between uh, Baba Sahib Ambedkar and Mahatma Gandhi later. Okay, so uh, here is the uh, odd one out, Ramsey MacDonald. Next question is, in which year the famous Gandhi Irwin Pact took place? So it was 1931, 5th of February, my friend. Gandhi Irwin Pact. Okay. In which session Indian National Congress passed complete independence resolution now? Uh, it is also a very famous fact. 1929 Lahore presided over by uh, Mr. Jawala Nehru. Next question now. Subhash Chandra Bose renamed Nicobar Island as? Uh, we all know that Subhash Chandra Bose has uh, demanded to rename the uh, islands of Andaman and Nicobar as Andaman as Shaheed Island and uh, Nicobar, here it is asked about Nicobar, so it is Swaraj Island. Andaman, Shaheed and Nicobar is Swaraj. So here my friends, Swaraj Island, <coughs> Nicobar as Swaraj Island, sorry. In which state is Chauri Chaura where in February 1922 a police station was set on fire? Again, a famous incident after which uh, the first big moment, first mass movement of Mr. Gandhi in India after he came back from South Africa, 1919, 19, uh, NCM, non cooperation movement, and uh, it halted, it halted the progress of NCM in after this very incident, Chauri Chaura in Uttar Pradesh. Next question now In which place Kuniram Bose tried to kill King's Fort? It was Mujafatpur. A very famous uh, incident in the modern history. Next question over here is during which movement Azad Dasta, again a revolutionary uh, force or active group at that time, active in Bihar, it was at the period of Quit India Movement 1942. 
Okay, next question now. Who was allotted the portfolio of Labor Department in the interim government's cabinet of 1946-80? It was Mr. Jagjeevan Ram, the Labor Department, the Labor, Minister for Labor Department. Okay, next question. In 1942 AD, on the occasion of which festival Jai Prakash Narayan escaped from Hazari Bagh Jail? Such beautiful questions. <laughs> BPSC. Okay. On the occasion of festival of Deepavali. So, last question from history section. Dr. Rajin Prasad was elected chairman of the Constituent Assembly in famous fact. December 1946, 13th of December to be precise, 13th of December 1946. The first interim press chairman was Sachidan, Mr. Sachidanan Sinha, owing to, her Ill health, owing to his ill health, he was not able to continue. So, and also he was the uh, oldest member, he was uh, the eldest member of in Constituent Assembly, that's why ceremonially, ceremonially he was made the chairman but after 13th of december the uh, mr rajin prasad was may, uh, was uh, was uh, elected as a true chairman and he continued till the formation of interim government and further now further discussion uh, further discussion we will further discuss the questions of polity also let's see the indian polity questions from indian polity there were 10 questions from in indian polity the first question of polity over here is electoral college. <coughs> Sorry. Electoral college for the 16th vice presidential election of India for 2022 consists of how many members? Now, the, the total electoral college, I would say, uh, is over here is 788. How that, how this number, how we arrive at this number, 788. See. The actual seats means the actual seats of uh, Raj Sabha and Lok Sabha. If we count them together, that then it comes to 788. So this is the actual strength. But uh, this time the uh, but this no, uh, but uh, at present time the 12 nominated members of Raj Sabha. Uh, these 12 nominated members are not, uh, the, the, the seats of these 12 nominated members are here, here by incomplete at this very time. It is incomplete. Uh, there are actually 6 vacancies, 6 or 8 vacancies, uh, 4 from uh, the seats of uh, Jammu and Kashmir, uh, Raj Sabha, from, from one from Tripura and, uh, okay. We will keep it that, that way. So, this is the actual strength 788. This was only asked about the, the presidential election. Vice presidential election electoral college consists of both the uh, both elected and nominated members from both the houses that is Lok Sabha and Raj Sabha. That is why we uh, we count every member elected as well as nominated. Uh, while we are electing our vice president, uh, it's slightly different from the electoral college of president of India. Okay, the next question is: Indian president is eligible for re-election for how many times? Now, <clears throat> according to Article 57 of the Indian Constitution, the article mentions that there is the it has not mentioned any uh, any debarration or any restriction to uh, for the president of India to uh, continue his office. He can continue as many times he he wants. Okay. Now, generally, next question. Generally, how many sessions are there in the Lok Sabha? Uh, we all know that the, we uh, our Indian Parliament has three sessions. Uh, consists of three sessions: budget session, monsoon session, and the winter session. Again, a very general fact about polity. Answer is three. Three sessions. Okay, uh, moving on to the next question. Who was the chairman of the first law commission in independent India? So, it was M.C. Sitalwad. Law commission, we all know that. Ladies and gentlemen, law commission is neither a constitutional body nor a statutory body. It is, it is, it, it has been created from 
uh, executive uh, just by an executive order so that's why it uh, has an advisory and uh, 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 fixed tenure it has an it, it acts as an advisory body and uh, for the formation of uh, for legislations for framing new legislations and uh, uh, also uh, they were uh, also it it has been uh, mandated to check the uh, status quo of the uh, re, of the continuing incumbent legislations of the, uh, that were created that were legislated in the past okay so moving on to the next question now if one nation and one election is to be realized in india which article of indian constitution will require an amendment so there are multiple uh, articles that uh, needs to be amended so therefore uh, the answer is more than one now you can see that article 83 article 38 uh, talks about duration of houses of parliament what will be the tenure of uh, uh, Lok Sabha and Raj Sabha now we all know that Raj Sabha is a continuing uh, continuing uh, section of Indian Parliament Lok Sabha has a, a definite uh, tenure of five years uh, if it, it has not been discontinued with any uh, uncertainty okay now 85 section 85 uh, talks about sessions of parliament prorogation and dissolution 172 again the same like uh, uh, house of parliament it talks about 172 talks about state legislature duration of state legislatures vidhan sabha or vidhan parishad if that states has a vidhan parishad uh, 174 sessions uh, sessions of the state legislature prorogation and uh, dissolutions likewise 356 talked about uh, uh, failure of constitutional machinery in states informally uh, we, or in other words we call it state emergency so that's why uh, the answer over here is none of the above uh, e none of the above and more than one of the above so we all know that there are multiple articles that needs to be amended if we implement one nation in one election so what is the next question over here is see which state does not have panchayat system it is also a crude fact that when we talk about the PRI system part 9 uh, we we all know that uh, except Nagaland, Meghala and Mizoram and uh, that is in that uh, that is in the context of states and in the when we talk about UT Delhi doesn't have a panchayat system it doesn't have a PRI Delhi doesn't have a PRI so Nagaland, Meghala and Mizoram these three states doesn't have a PRI system in their states next question the division of each states into territorial constituencies for the Lok Sabha is done by delimitation commission this delimitation has been freezed till which year <coughs> again the famous amendment of uh, 80 of uh, 84th amendment 2001 it has extended uh, the uh, the delimitation the fixation of seats till 2026 the territorial constituencies for uh, the territorial constituencies for Lok Sabha it has been fixed uh, it has been decided as per the basis of 1971 census but the territory the but the st states but the uh, seats of the states uh, after 84th uh, this constitutional amendment 2001 it has been uh, it has been on the basis of uh, 2001 census so this is the status quo moving on to the next question the supreme court is a now the, the it's a federal court yes protector of human rights yes final interpretation of the constitution yes so <clears throat> there are multiple answers for this so therefore more than one of the above it is the highest judicial court we all know that it is the uh, supreme uh, institution for interpreting the constitutional provisions yes it is the final court of appeal we all know that and uh, its orders are uh, very much implemented and very much uh, uh, adhered to when a supreme court passes an order for uh, the implementation of for the states for the state governments 
for the central governments or for the lower subordinate courts like high courts and also uh, subordinate courts. So, next question. To review the financial position of panchayats, the state government constitutes every five years, yes, the finance commission. The finance commission has the mandate of reviewing the, reviewing the financial, po financial position of panchayats. So, uh, we all know that there are three lists in the uh, uh, schedule 7 union list, state list and the concurrent list though. So the PRI system, PRI system, Panchayati Raj system comes under the purview of state list. So uh, we all know that two, article 243 part 9, part 9 deals with, uh, part 9 of the Indian constitution deals with the, uh, the Panchayats, 243, 243O that deals with Panchayat. So uh, in that, art, in that section of articles in to article 243i specifically mentions that uh, it is it, it is mandated for the governor to uh, constitute every five year a uh, finance commission for uh, uh, the distribution of tax proceeds and levies of uh, uh, tech, uh, of uh, the financial resources between the state government and the panchayati raj institutions at some some states have uh, three level of panchayati raj some has only two levels of panchayats, like West Bengal. Okay, moving on to the last question of uh, of our polity. What is the objective of community development? Now, community development program was constituted just after the uh, Indian independence in 1952. Uh, so it was done. Uh, it was done by keeping in mind that we have to make we have to make uh, uh, the specifically it is for the rural india it, it was it was framed it was this this development program was framed for uh, the rural india so the theme uh, the theme that uh, that governed the community development program was that the ruler the rural the rural people they have they have to be engaged with uh, their governance and they were they themselves are to manage their resources they uh, they have to set their priorities they have to set their priorities and uh, according to their priority they have to develop their uh, uh, basic infrastructures and what what infra they would require to fulfill their growth and development so this was the some other uh, some postulates are over here some uh, nuances are given over here uh, you can refer to it when you were given the pdf of this session okay 